Welcome to another week of the Maryville Forum Sports Podcast. I'm John Dykstra, joined by Anthony Crane, and we're going to take you through last week and this week around um, around Nottoway County football and, uh, and the teams that we cover. So um, just diving right into it, Maryville last week, Anthony. I know we were kind of split on that game. Would you like to eat any crow about your uh, your – disbelief in the spoof hounds and that dominating performance they had last week? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> it seems like I don't understand 11-man football, and specifically I don't understand Maryville. Um, it seems like games that they maybe shouldn't win, they seem to win, and then games where I think they sh- they're going to dominate, they they lose, like, you know, St. Pius. So. Um, but, yes, I will eat some crow, uh, even though – to be fair, I am an outsider and don't know a whole lot about the spoof hounds. I I picked them last week. Uh, I picked them in a closer game than it ended up being, that's for sure. But uh, I picked them to win. I just thought that um, just by the way Coach Webb was talking and kind of reading between the lines when he would say that they're a very individually talented team, um, that's, that's some coach speak that I think um, I kind of – picked up on a little bit I mean you can have an individually talented team and even not not play as a team perfectly together and you can still beat everybody Trinity Catholic a couple years ago who we talked about last time as an example of that but they weren't that insanely talented like Trinity Catholic was particularly in the trenches um or particularly on the offensive line actually um where Maryville was able to get some pressure on him and uh, disrupt the big guy, even though he's an internet sensation and Barstool loves him and and Jim Bly's getting uh, getting follows all over the place. Apparently, he was talking to me at the softball game yesterday, talking about talking about his video going going viral there with you click. So uh, he's he's pretty excited about it, even if they they don't bother to mention that final score when they talk about old Mr. Howard Brown. But, um, well, I mean, it was a great you, and I, you and I talked about this. It, it does seem a little strange that, you know, him playing quarterback uh, kind of affects his ability to play defense. Yeah. Um, I talked to a couple of the guys after the game, kind of just, just talking after we got done interviewing. And um, I, I brought that up to them. I was like, was it, was it nice to not have him on defense? And then, and they said, yeah, we were wondering the same thing. Like, why would you waste him on offense when he's going to college to play defense? Like, he's not – like, he was a good quarterback. He was a good runner, everything like that. But um, I would think they would be able to find somebody who could throw the ball as well as him. At least the difference between their him and their second-string quarterback would be less than him in their second string defensive tackle because mm-hmm. Maryville just ran all over them and it was a lot of up the gut stuff. Trey Houchin was the leading rusher and uh, normally that's been Connor Weiss and getting to the outside mm-hmm. because like I said the the line has struggled at times this year, but the line dominated on Friday. It was their best performance of the year and Trey Trey had over a hundred yards rushing. Um, just basically up the middle on those fullback dives. So it was a huge, huge game for, for Trey and the offensive line to kind of to show that, that side of it. And it hasn't been as huge of a part of the offense, as productive a part, I think, as they'd like this year um, so far because of that line play. And uh, they took a huge step on Friday. It was – Super impressive to see how how they played up front offensively and defensively as well. It was hard to tackle uh, Big Howard Brown, but they were they were getting to him like crazy, and then eventually they'd be able to gang tackle him or take him down by by the legs and cut cut his legs out from under him. But they uh, the, it was just an impressive performance all the way around from Maryville and. Uh, Caleb Kreisinger also, we've been talking about the running game and uh, and uh, with Trey and the line play, obviously. But uh, Caleb Kreisinger had a huge game, had a had a catch with 10 seconds left in the half to, to give him the lead. Uh, that was 
KQ2's uh, one of their plays of the week this week because he just got the foot down in the back of the end zone. It was a beautiful catch. And then had a 100-yard uh, interception return uh, three plays after uh, Mr. Brown's famous play. He threw one that was tipped by Trey, and Caleb picked it off and, and went uh, 100 yards the other way for a touchdown to pretty much seal the game at that point. That score did. So uh, big day all around for Maryville. And uh, that puts them – they're still sitting, as we kind of look ahead towards towards playoff time here in a couple of weeks, they're sitting second in their uh, in their district right now behind Richmond. Um, they're not going to pass Richmond unless Richmond loses a game and, and Maryville runs the table the rest of the way, uh, which is two games left for Maryville against Savannah and Lafayette. Um, they should beat Lafayette. Lafayette has struggled mightily this year lost to Cameron last week. Um, the uh, the Savannah game, though, is the big one, and that's this week. Um, Savannah's undefeated in the MEC. Um, they have not played the schedule that Maryville has played, um, not by a long shot, but they are undefeated in the conference. They also haven't played St. Pius. Um, they play Pius next week. They end the year with Maryville and Pius. So their two toughest games of the year are the, the last two. So it'll be interesting this week going down to Savannah. I know, Anthony, uh, yourself growing up in the MEC, you know about that Savannah-Maryville rivalry. So um, just what, what are you looking forward to about seeing this week's game? Uh, well, it always seems to be, you know, a fun matchup. And uh, that, was, that was kind of the great thing about playing in the MEC is you have these great rivalries. Now, you know, you and I have discussed the MEC has kind of fallen apart a bit over the last decade or so with certain teams going in other directions. Um, and so really, you know, what's left, um, you know, they may have the biggest rivalry in the MEC. Uh, Benton and Lafayette's not really much of one, uh, at least as much as it should be. Um, so this is kind of a game you, you look forward to every year. Um, and as far as I know, you know, Maryville has gotten the better end of them. Um, so it's always, a te- it's always going to be a test going there or playing them in general because um, you're going to get their best shot. Um, and that's, that's part of the process. You know, um, we saw that, you know, even in like softball the other night where, you know, King City gave Platte Valley all they could handle. And, you know, that's part of being – uh, the top dog. And while Maryville has had the success they're used to in regular season, they're still Maryville. And I think Savannah is always a team that looks to prove they're better. And you, we see that not only in football, but that rivalry goes deep in every sport. Yeah, and they kind of – they one thing that makes it really interesting is they both try to win in the same way. So both running teams um, – um, they do it a little differently. Maryville, obviously, as we were just talking about, Houchin, Weiss, Steckline, they have a lot of running backs, and a, it's a different guy seemingly every week. Um, Savannah makes no makes no secret about who they have. A couple of years ago when I was covering them, it was Tank Irvine back there running the ball. Now it's Evan Yow. Um, a little bit speedier option. Um, that's that's one thing Coach Webb talked to me about last um, – when I talked to him on Sunday was uh, that he's got a little bit more speed back there, and if you let him get into the open field, it's, it's trouble. So um, it'll be interesting to see. We could have a very quick game down in Savannah if both teams are run the ball as much as they, uh, they want to. But um, it'll be – It'll be a real interesting contest, that's for sure, with two teams that want to smash the ball at you, and uh, and it'll be uh, it'll be a tough one to pick. But with that being said, I'm going to ask you for your Maryville pick of the week, and we'll see if you can get. I'm pretty sure you're about over on these, so um, I think you might pick the Cameron game right. We might have got that. Yeah, but, yeah, I think I got that one right. But. Um, <laughs> Let's uh, let's go into this week, and uh, do you think the Spoof Hounds will be able to uh, keep that Highway 71 sign up here? I think so. 
Uh, and, you know, looking through Savannah's season, it's it's been a strange one. You know, you beat Lafayette by two points. Uh, you go to Central, you win 11 to nothing. Um, but then, you know, it seems like they maybe have figured some things out lately. You know, they destroyed Cameron, uh, beat Chillicothe pretty well. Um, I think it'll be a good game. Um, but the way uh, Maryville is playing right now, I, I can't imagine them tripping up against a rival. Um, you know, I talked about last week the, the chemistry of the team, and um, even with those tough matchups with Odessa or picking up, you know, g- you know picking up that game, uh, playing Lincoln prep, you know, games like that where maybe on paper it looks like you're the underdog. We found out differently, you know, last week. Um, these are, you know, the season doesn't start until districts, really. Um, this is all, you know, time to get that chemistry going, especially with everything they've gone through this year. And I just – I don't see them tripping up against Savannah. Uh, that said, every time I pick them to win, they lose. So, sorry, Spoof Hounds. <laughs> yeah, Coach Webb's going to have an earful for you. But I'm going to agree this week. I, I don't – I just think when you're as one-dimensional as Savannah's been this year, and obviously in some of those blowouts, you don't need to throw the ball. So, being one-dimensional doesn't really – really matter there as much. And when you run for over 200 yards a game with one running back, that's uh, – you don't you don't need to throw the ball or give the ball to anybody else either. But I think Maryville is a good enough team that they can take away what you want to do most. And for them, that's hand the ball to, to Yout. But um, he's uh, – so I think they're going to focus on him and – and limit him. I don't think you can completely shut him out because he's that good of a bat. But they're going to limit him at least and try to take away his big plays. So, and then coming along offensively, I think Connor Drake has really made some strides the last couple weeks. Um, That two-minute drill he ran that ended with the pass of Chrysinger that I talked about last time where he made the catch in the back of the end zone 16 yards out with uh, 10 seconds left and a half. He's, he's made some of those plays. He still had errors. He threw a pick six last week, um, or a near pick six, I should say. Caden Steckline hustled it down and, uh, and saved a touchdown, ended up saving four points. But um, he, he's, had, he's had mistakes, but he's also made some strides and is starting to make more and more big plays. So – I think that's a positive and can maybe get a little bit of balance in the offense. And they've got more natural balance anyway with, uh, with the wing team and the way they run that with, uh, with Carter White's and Caden Steckline and Caden Wilms and Trey Houchin. It's not going to be a one man show. Um, so with that being said, I'm picking Maryville to win. And I think they'll win by a couple touchdowns. Actually. I think they're, they're fired up for this game. Uh, Savannah, like you said, is always fired up for this game. Uh, they haven't had the previous postseason success that Maryville's had. So this game's always huge for them, obviously, as they hope to, to get that postseason success uh, one of these years. But um, just going into it, I think Maryville's a stronger team. I think they've, they've been more te- battle-tested this year. And I think that's really going to help them going into this game. So I'm going to pick them by by a couple scores this week, um, and they get they get a big win. Um, moving on, though, another team that had a big win last week was uh, was Platte Valley getting off the snide against the Cab. Uh, Derek Zimmerman Geyer went there and covered that game for us, but um, they just had a really a really <laughs> seemed like thrilling game and a nice little comeback to uh to get that win but um as somebody who's covered them a couple times this year Anthony and uh and has seen that team and the adversity they faced like how how good did it feel to see them get that win last week I think it was really important um we've discussed over the last month or so the difficulties that Platte Valley's had with you know, things are kind of out of their control injury-wise. Um, some really big losses. And this is a team that, you know, they they got down big in this game, uh, down a couple scores to a decap team that we've discussed is not a good team. Um, but they fought back. 
Um, and that was good to see. Um, and it was led by some of the uh, older guys. You know, Gabe Nostin had a big game. Uh, it, it was, was good to see, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and it was good to see that backfield in general get going um, because there is talent in that backfield. Uh, is it talent that will win you a district title? Probably not. But if you can get that running game going, um, kind of take the air out of the ball, um, that will help you stay in games. Uh, moving forward, I don't – you know, it's <laughs> a tough road. You, you end the season, uh, you go to uh, East Atchison and games like that. Before you head into districts, um, but it, it was it was good to see them win. Uh, they've had a rough few weeks, um, and I just can't. Uh, you know, I feel awful for that team because they had such high hopes coming into the season. You know, with so many kids out, uh, some pretty good pieces. Uh, they had a passing game go in, uh, which is something we haven't seen from them in a while. And you know, you lose your quarterback, and that, that's been a shuffle there as well. Yeah. Um, so hopefully they can get that kind of figured out. Um, I know, you know, beating DeKalb, no one's <laughs> no one's throwing you a parade for that. But you know, for that Platte Valley team uh, to go through that adversity like they have been all year um, and to come out on top, it, it has to feel great for uh, Coach Brevlin and those kids. And uh, and they went with. I mean, we talked last week about them shifting to Memphis Valley as the as the uh, quarterback but going to going to Memphis there um it is a little bit of a youth movement quarterback and he sounded like he did some good things last week um I, they're obviously built on the running game but he was a part of that running game and also made some throws so um I think that's just exciting if you're a Platte Valley fan going forward to kind of to see what he can do back there and see if maybe you've got your quarterback of the future lined up Mm-hmm. and just kind of see how he develops these last couple of weeks. Because you mentioned them ending the year with East Action. Um, but this week they have Stewartsville. And um, a, a, an outside perspective would probably say Stewartsville, even though they only have one win, is favored in that game just because of how shorthanded Platte Valley is. But it is still a winnable game for, for Platte Valley. Like, it – it wouldn't be absolutely shocking to see to see Stewartsville fall to them. Stewartsville's only won one game all year, and it was the first game of the year. So it's it's been a while for them too. So mm-hmm. this week, I think that's a really interesting game, um, and it's in Barnard. So um, as much of a home field advantage as you could have with uh, the situation around us, obviously with COVID and everything. But um, they're, they'll be at home, and that will be exciting because they've been on the road for the last couple of weeks. But um, I'm, I'm really curious to see if they can get that win. And that will really help them if they can maybe jump up a spot in the district standings. Right now they're sitting, they're sitting at the bottom of those standings in eighth, and then they would draw East Ashton, um, unfortunately for them, on back to back weeks if that holds up, which is yeah. which is tough. Um so I'd I'd well, like we'll, find, to see them. we'll find out this week how that top spot's gonna Yeah, yeah. Out. There's there's it could switch up, but either way it happens, I would like for them to to play Stanberry or Mound City or somebody other than East Ashton back to back just as a just as a fan of the teams and, and somebody who's following these, like nobody wants to see the same matchup back to back weeks. So uh, wow. I'm, I'm hoping that they can uh, either change their standing or East Action changes theirs. And uh, maybe we don't have to watch them back to back weeks there. Uh, but it'll be interesting. If they could get a win this week, it's possible they could jump Northwest not away in the standings. So, um, with that being said, um, I'll start off picking this one. Um, I really like that they got a win and got some confidence last week. Um, so with that, I'm going to pick them to defend their home turf and uh, squeeze out a win. Be a close win like last week. It'll be it'll be hard fought in a tough game. But I think they can beat Stewartsville. Um, I have not been super impressed. Um, with Stewartsville on the in the scores this year, 
Um, they did beat Northwest Nottaway earlier this year, but um, like I said, that was week one. So it's been a while. Um, I think Platte Valley got a little confidence last week, and I think this week could be an even better showing than what they had against the Cavs. So I'm going to pick Platte Valley to pull, like I said, maybe like a mild upset in this one, but I think they're going to get the win. Anthony, are we in agreement on that, or are you going to go the other way? Uh, you know, this is, this is a tough one for me. Um, I, I'll go with Platte Valley. It's really kind of a toss-up. I think more of what we saw last week where maybe last team to have the ball wins. Uh, I will be interested to see if they kind of get that defense figured out. The 50 points of decap concerns me a little bit because, yeah. you know, while they've had injuries you know, that affected them offensively, uh, that defense was still fairly solid. Uh, you know, you do miss a Carter Luke, uh, yeah. Trevor mm-hmm. McQueen. Um, so we'll see if they get that stuff sorted out. And if they do, yeah, I think they can win this game. Like I said earlier, really lean on the run, help the young quarterback out, uh, and just don't turn the ball over. And if they do all those things, then they should be able to beat Stewartsville. There you go. And um, we'll transition, like I said, um, Northwest Nottaway last week played Bishop LeBlond. We both picked uh, the Muskets in that game, I believe. And uh, they they did not get the job done there. Um, they lost at LeBlond. Um, I think we may – at least I'll speak for myself. I may need to eat some crow on LeBlanc. LeBlanc's won, won two of the last three. Um, they've, got, they've got some winnable games coming up, too, LeBlanc does. So um, I think they might be a better team than I was giving them credit for, especially the way they handled Northwest Nottaway last week. Um, the game had some big plays, had some turnovers. So um, they – it's it's – it could have been a lot closer. Probably should have been a lot closer. But um, whenever you beat a team by multiple scores like LeBlon did, um, it's it's an impressive win for them. So uh, what what do you see from just kind of looking at the stats of that game? And, uh, and I should say we had Cody Thorne there covering the game for the forum as well. Um, so from – from reading Cody's stuff and the stats of the game, what what are your takeaways from that one, Anthony? Well, I'll first start with uh, I hope you have a big appetite because there is a lot of crow. It's, for you it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> I'm saving them. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really disappointing. Um, it's kind of like the Stewartsville loss for them. And that one I was a little more understandable. You know, new coach, first game of the year. Uh, you had kind of had the game one, had, there was a penalty. Um, but the way that the Muskets have been playing recently, uh, th- this is a game they should have won. LeBlon is a solid team, um, but that's still a game you hope to win. Uh, but, you know, you can't turn the ball over, and that's kind of what seems like happened. You can't give up a touchdown on a fourth and 20. Uh, it's just those little things. And part of it is that this is still a pretty young team. Uh, They do have some seniors, um, but you see a lot of freshmen out there Mm -hmm. getting minutes for them. Uh, And that's really the only positive you can take away from this is these are lessons that we'll be able to use going forward. But, yeah, it was a fairly disappointing loss because I I thought that the way they've been playing, they would handle LeBlanc, and uh, they didn't. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, that game just coming out of it, like I said, it seemed like there were some turnovers and they kind of shot themselves in the foot a couple times. When they had opportunities to either take the lead or to keep that game close and within reach. Um, so they'll they're regret that one, but it's also a, a learning experience for that team, like you said. Uh, this week, um, they, after a couple winnable games, the last two weeks with the Cab and, and LeBlanc, uh, they get right back into the grind with Southwest Livingston. Um, I don't think Southwest Livingston needs too much of an introduction. They are the number two team in the state. 
Um, they got some first place votes in the media poll I saw this week. Um, actually went up for some reason, even though North Andrews still undefeated. We'll, uh, we'll discuss North Andrews a little later. But um, Southwest Livingston's a really good team. Um, they are going to come up here and I think uh, – be able to stay with just one loss on the season and uh, beat Northwest not away. So that's my pick. Yeah. Southwest Livingston beats them like we talked about a few weeks ago with Mount City game. Um, the the key for Northwest not away is going to be just to um, look presentable in that game. Um, kind of maybe see if you can do a little bit on offense against them and and see if you can. Uh, just show a little, little bit of something and build some confidence going forward. But that's that's a tough draw for anybody. So I'll pick up with Livingston in that one. Uh, they need to watch the Mountain City game. Uh, that is going to be the best way uh, to slow down Southwest. And that is basically saying, all right, you love throwing the ball, but we're not going to let you. And that is maybe the one – the one thing that Northwest kind of has going for them is they do have a little bit of speed with, uh, you know, Aiden Blackford and uh, Preston Bateman. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's, you know, Mound City, uh, they knew they did not have the the speed to kind of keep up with them. So they went with more of a 2-6 look on defense, and that kind of slowed them down a little bit. You know, you force Wes Hughes to, you know, be a little bit uncomfortable. Um, they, you know, Mount City benefits. They have, they had, at least at the time, had a pretty strong defensive line that was able to generate some pressure. And I think, you know, the Muskets have a bit of that too. So I think that's kind of what you do is you drop back, you keep everything in front of you, and you force Southwest to do it the, the hard way. And then you got to try and make some plays offensively, try and control the ball. Uh, the problem with that, with that is, you know, we talk a lot about Southwest and their offense with West West Hughes and Chase Neptune, but they also have the best defensive player in the state of defensive end, and so that will also that will be another issue they have is that is a a, a pretty serious defensive line uh, over there. So, yeah, this one will be one that you you want. You're pro- you're not going to win. But you want to be respectable. You want that, you know, that Mountain City effort they put up. Um, I know that Coach Calfey said that you know there were no more moral victories, uh, but I'll have to disagree with uh, him on this one and say this is another opportunity to get one of those. And if you can hang with them through the second half, uh, you know they Platte Valley lost in two quarters. You don't want that because right now you are a better team than Platte Valley. Um, so you want to make sure you get to that second half um, and you just learn from it. Uh, it's a good thing, you know, to see these great teams. You know, as guys that played sports, um, I'm sure you ran across some pretty elite teams in your day. Uh, you know, I did too as well. Mm-hmm. And it's it's something you can learn from. You can see how things are done. Um, you have things to chase, you know, in the future. And I think that's the opportunity that Northwest has this week. We know there are some pretty elite teams where I grew up in in Iowa. Just ask Pattonsburg about those Iowa teams this week. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, had to get a shot in there. But, uh, for, for example, of, uh, of kind of the defense that Anthony was talking about with Mount City, I think it's, a, it's to bring a college example into it, Iowa State the last few years, how they played Oklahoma as they rushed three guys and dropped eight back into coverage the entire time. And they've gotten a couple wins over Oklahoma the last couple of years doing it, yeah. or the last few years doing that. And uh, that's kind of that's kind of the philosophy is you, you make that quarterback get a little antsy back there because nobody's open right away, and maybe, maybe you throw them off. Or maybe one of those guys rushes yeah. just beats his guy and can get, can yes. get to him and then and – then, break it loose but i think uh, was a it's kind of a bill belichick thing if i'm not mistaken you, know, you, saw, that you, you saw that against the chiefs when they played as they said okay you love throwing the ball well <laughs> try and throw it against seven defensive backs yeah and that's kind of the thing is 
Southwest can run the ball, but they don't want to. So force them to do something they don't want to do. Yeah, and even run the ball, you rally up, you make the tackle. But um, the the one thing I will say is an eight-man, sometimes you don't have seven defensive backs to put out there like the Belichick can. So um, you, you still, an eight-man, have to get your best eight guys on the field. So however Northwest feels they can do that, they should do that, but they should try to mix up some coverages a little bit against uh, against the best passing team right now in uh, in eight man. I'd say even over a team like Pattsburgh, Pattsburgh's probably the argument. But um, Coach Kevin, I, he is not going to like you after this. I'm, I'm throwing it out there. Um, the most successful team, I think Pattsburgh, obviously puts up the yardage, but. Um, but Southwest Livingston this year with Hughes has just been – has been great. So, um, no shade meant to a coach out there at Pattsburgh, but, um, but it'll be interesting to see what, what the Muskets can do with, uh, with Southwest this week. Um, but moving on to, uh, to the crow that I need to eat um, some more of, I guess, is uh, Mount City uh, – I thought they could find a way to compete with uh, South Holt Not Away Holt this week. I was wrong. They South South Holt Not Away Holt looked great. Um, it was kind of close early, and then they just blew the doors off of them. Um, great, great game from a lot of guys out there. Brody Scoggins, I know, had a huge game. Um, obviously, Drew Quinlan is Drew Quinlan, so he's going to have himself a day some of these times. Um, James Herr giving the big guys some love, but he had he had a big game this week. Uh, yeah. Got himself an Athlete of the Week nomination from us. So, um, uh, fumble recovery, a safety, and a sack. So, you don't get much better than that for a defensive lineman. Um, so, it was just a big – Big win for uh, South Holt, not away Holt. Uh, a little bit of a statement win. I know you can say Mountain City was down, but still, when you beat your rival and you beat them like that, it's got to be a good feeling. So, Anthony, you were out there at that game. What do you what do you see from uh, from the Spartans this week, and uh, how were they able to to handle Mountain City the way they did? We'll start with the good, and that is their offense. Uh, and just the perfection <laughs> that they run the option with. Um, and that, you know, like we talked about Drew Quinlan, it starts with him. Uh, he's just – he's as smart as he is talented, and he is able to – you know, there were times where Mountain City would be all over him. There was a third down play where he had two guys on his back and he still managed to complete the pass. Um, he, he's just that kind of player where even if you do everything right, he still finds a way to do it. Um, like you said, they hung with the Spartans for a while. And that kind of brings up the concerns that we've seen from them uh, over the last few years, and specifically against Southwest, and that is their secondary. Um, I think a lot of teams will have issues running the ball against the Spartans, uh, you know, thanks to guys like James. Um, yeah. But their secondary is really not good. And that – for them, they they got to figure something out there. Um, you know, Connor Durr, credit him. He was thrown into the fire a little bit. Um, and for Mountain City to come out in four wide, which, you know, I've only been covering them a few years now. Um, but even Quinn, Drew Quinlan said that he's never seen them ever do that. <laughs> um, and so – and that – you point to coaching there um, because those coaches saw the Southwest game. They saw the – the secondary has issues, and that's what they were able to do. They were able to just drop back, uh, throw some long balls, and complete some of them. And so those are things that Southwold's got to figure out a way to fix. I don't know how at this point in the season, um, but that's got to be it. Because, you know, with a wounded Mount City defense, they were able to move the ball quickly by running it. Uh, once we get to districts and you're playing King City, Pattonsburg, North Andrew, uh, teams like, you can't afford to get down uh, to teams like that just because you don't have – and nothing against Quinlan because he can throw the ball with the best of them. But he didn't really have anyone to throw the ball to. 
Uh, and that's, that's kind of the issue is they need to get ahead, play physical, uh, and hope the teams don't, aren't good at passing the ball. Even a team like Pattonsburg, um, it could be a close game there. While South Holt and Holt may be the more talented team because of their ability to not be able to stop the pass, those are the type of teams that can hang with them and could upset them if they can't figure things out defensively. Yeah, um, let's dive into a little bit just looking – Looking down the road a little bit at their district, um, North Andrew is the one seed, obviously, right now, being undefeated. And then South Holt, Nottoway Holt, checks in as a two, with Orc, Pattonsburg, and King City all kind of bunched up there, three through five. Orc has a little bit of an advantage right now. Um, is the worst-case nightmare scenario, you think, uh, for South Holt, Nottoway Holt? if Pattonsburg could somehow jump Oric and get into that three spot and you'd have to face that passing offense, considering all you just said about their secondary in the second round of districts, is that, is that kind of worst case scenario right now? Are they big Oric fans in, uh, in Oregon and Graham right now? I think so. Um, you know, Pattonsburg's a little wounded right now, but they still have Cameron Jones. And there's not a – I don't know if there's a person in eight man that can really cover him. And so that would be a concern. And because they're so relentless, they will just keep chucking it and they're going to make plays. Um, it is weird to say that I think that North Andrew is a better matchup for South Holt, not away Holt, than uh, Pattonsburg. Or even, you know, King City's four and three. Um, but since Landon Wells came back at quarterback, they have been on fire. And that's why I, you know, I look at this district and it is just so stacked, um, which you know, sucks for South Holt, not away Holt. It's good for people like us. Um, it makes it fun. And uh, I, I don't think Oryx going to stay at three. Um, they're going to face North Shelby this week. There's a bit of bad blood there. And I know that North Shelby is hungry to knock them off. Um, you know, North Shelby's, their schedule has been somewhat soft. Um, and they've played well against, you know, North Andrew and Stanbury just came up short last week in overtime. So they're looking for that key win. Um, so then you're looking at possibly Pattonsburg moving up to three. And I don't think you want that if you're South Holt, um, because that's your biggest weakness is stopping the pass and that they throw the ball with the best of them. Yeah. If it lined up right now, how it would finish. Uh, the dif- district standings, and we could probably put it up on the screen, but um, it's North Andrew is one, um, South Holt, Nottoway Holt is two, Oric is three at the moment. That would be a possible second round matchup for South Holt, Nottoway Holt. Pattonsburg and King City, if it stood right now, would have to play each other in, uh, in that first playoff game, which might be the best first round game in the state. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's that's a great matchup. LeBlond, who we were talking about, has gotten better, would face Orr, which um, LeBlond's probably not getting that win, but that's a, that's a more interesting game than some, that's for sure. And well, they, you know, LeBlond could be looking to knock off their old coach. That's true. Um, and then Stewartsville uh, would face South Holt, not away Holt, which uh, South Holt, not away Holt should have – easy time with that, and then DeCab gets uh, North Andrew and probably the worst game of the first round of the playoffs. Um, So I think if you're South Holt, you just want the playoffs to start today. You want that second-round Oric matchup and to to let North Andrew knock off those two passing teams in round two for you so you don't have to see them and get that. You're also really rooting for King City. while King City can throw the ball, it's not the same as a Pattonsburg. Uh, and they that's, can throw the ball, and they also got Parker Muff, though, right? Like, that's yeah, a, yeah. That's but, a you know, dual threat offense. But we've seen it. You know, we've seen a beat-up Worth County team uh, hang with uh, King City. Um, so, But I'm saying of the two, you would much rather face King City um, because I think you can – limit Parker Muff as much as one can 
And Parker Muff, uh, as fantastic as he is, he has a bit of fumbling problem. Um, so I think yeah, I think there you're rooting. You if you're going to play one, you want to play King City. And I, that's what I'm saying. That's what I love about this district because if King City is hot, they can beat any team in that district. If Pattonsburg is healthy uh, and able to throw the football and the weather's fine, they could beat anyone in that district. Uh, or it, I, I, I don't love what I've seen from them. They've taken a step back this year. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, South Holt and uh, North Andrew are really good as well. So. I feel like I feel like we're disrespecting Oric a little bit, but it's just because these other teams, you don't normally go into a district where there are five quality teams. And in this one, there appears to be maybe even six, Bishop LeBlanc could argue, of some quality at least. And um, this this district's just really good. And if you're South Holt, not away Holt, and you're sitting in that two seed, you would love to only have to face one of North Andrew, Pattonsburg, King City, and have that be in the district championship game. So, any way you could do that, um, I think, would be a good, good outcome for South Holt, not away Holt. But they definitely – they're not a team that's scared of anybody, that's for sure. So, um, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out and how the matchups kind of align going into next week. Um, or going into these last two weeks here, actually. Um, yeah. And our last matchup of the week is uh, is Worth County, who was off last week, but uh, returns to play this week. Um, coming off, it's not it's not an easy return to play, that's for sure, because they get the number one team in the state with uh, with North Andrew. I know they've had the week off, but they haven't been able to. Uh, to really have the whole team together and practice or anything. So just going, I know we're in unprecedented territory with what's going on right now, but um, just how tough of a draw is that for Coach Healy and, and his guys to hopefully they're able to knock off a little bit of the rust, but to have to go uh, to Rosendale and play North Andrew this week, um, just – Talk a little bit about how tough of a matchup that is for them, Anthony. You know, that's the thing about, <laughs> you know, this season is like, you know, North Andrews number one, but it's not like the last few years where if you had a break and you had to come back and play Mount City or the Worth County teams from a few years ago. Um, North Andrews is good, but if we've learned anything, you know, last week or uh, – previous weeks they're not unbeatable um they've been fairly dominant but not so much so you know they're not clocking people um that being said i still think they're really good what i do like for worth county is they've already experienced the mess with covid um you know i think the covid issue um seems to be coming from the co-op and the other school um, because of the restrictions in Nottaway County. So they have I feel like they've adjusted a little bit to not having those kids. And they did a good job against King City, you know, and that was a game they learned the night before. Then they had a full week of practice with uh, that same group that played against King City, and they go to Oric and win that one pretty easily. Also, you know, we've been waiting all year for Aiden Gladstone to get back, and he's finally here. Uh, I talked to Healy earlier today, and he said that Aiden looks good. Um, now we'll see how he looks in the game because that is a long time to go without playing you know, live football. But, you know, we saw from him last year that he is a talented kid. Uh, he can throw it. He can run it. And I think that would give a little boost to everyone. You know, if you're Andrew Alarcon, who, <laughs> who has put this team on his back all season, um, that will give you a little bit of a boost to know that, hey, it's not just going to be me. Because, um, like I said, you watch them um, with just Alarcon. Everyone knows it's going to Alarcon. It's only because he's a special player that they're able to continue to win like they do. Um, so I think that will be a big boost. Um, but much like the Spartans a little bit, Worth County's issue is the de- de- defense. And that is a pretty good uh, Cardinal offense they're going up against. 
And so I think, if anything, we could be in for a bit of a shootout. Well, I say this two ways. It's either a shootout or the Worth County offense stubs their toes, and it's not as close as I think it should be. Um, As far as my pick, I think I'd have to lean towards the number one team that isn't returning players. They've been together all year. Um, So I'm going to have to go with them. But I do think it's a little bit closer than you might think for a team that's uh, four and two coming off quarantine and has all sorts of issues. Um, I think Gladstone helps uh, motivate them, give them a little extra energy. And uh, we see a good game in Rosendale. Yeah. um, The one thing I would add with – the talk about Alicom being like a one-man show is he does have that line in front of him. And over the last few years, Worth County's best linemen have been the Northeast Nottaway kids. Yeah. And um, I think that's, that's been the case this year too, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So I don't know who's all out for, from the Northeast Nottaway side, but if you're having a quarterback who hasn't taken live reps and, who, who can't be 100% yet. Um, no. and, At least mentally. I think that's going to be the toughest issue for yeah. him is mentally getting back. And you want to protect him, obviously, in his first game back a little bit. You don't want him getting hit all the time. And Alicon, who's, of course, a great running back, but can't run if you're, if you're getting hit immediately after getting the ball. That's the part that scares me against North Andrew is yeah. uh, what's their line going to look like this week? Are they going to be able to get those skill players opportunities to succeed without um, without maybe a couple of those linemen up front? Like I said, I don't yeah. want to speculate on COVID and who's out, but but if if they have lost a couple linemen, especially a couple key ones. Um, that could spell trouble going to uh, to North Andrew. And that's why I'm picking North Andrew, and I'm picking it by a little bit bigger spread than you are. I think they win by by a few scores. Um, I think it's maybe like a 25- to 30-point game out there. I think they, they win it pretty handily. I think they had a scare last week, North Andrew did, with Albany, of course. And I think they bounce back this week and they don't want to cut it that close again. So I'm picking, uh, or I'm picking uh, North Andrew to win this one pretty handily. But there can still be a lot of good things if you're Worth County coming out of this. If Gladstone looks good, the rest is kind of gravy because you just need to get him back to the point where he is, yeah. he's your leader and he's your quarterback, and uh, you got that one-two punch in the backfield. Yeah, and they, got, they have to get this uh, COVID thing under control um, because, you know, we're getting to that point in the season. You know, we're talking about districts. You can't just cancel those games. You can, yeah. but then your season's over. Um, and that is – the one thing, you know, we talked about the Odessa game with Maryville uh, and it helping to have a guy like Matt Webb. Um, I think we've seen – I don't know if Coach Healy has gotten the credit he deserves um, just based on the amount of talent that he's had um, because when you have that kind of talent, uh, it can, to some people, look like, well, maybe you're a good coach, but you also have, you know, yeah. All state guys everywhere. They've, they've reloaded a few times to be yeah. fair to Coach yeah. Healy. It's not like he's he's got yeah. an eye with one group of one group of guys. So well, um, and you know, even I kind of you know, it's it's seasons like this where you see what coaches are made of, and I've been thoroughly impressed with Healy, um, and that's that's part of the reason I think they can hang with North Andrew um, if they lose by thirty. It happens. You know, Stanberry is a great team. They went to Rosendale and got smacked around and lost by 30 themselves. So, lose, like you said, the biggest thing here is keeping everyone healthy and helping Gladstone get adjusted and used to football again. Uh, getting out of North Andrew healthy and then uh, getting ready for districts because their district is, depending on what happens with Mound City, um, it's a Fairly, you know, they could win that district. East Atchison's really good. Uh, Stanberry is – they've been good uh, in spots. 
they've looked young at other times. Uh, Mound City, I've heard Papa could be out anywhere from, you know, four to five weeks. And at that point, you know, your season's kind of over. Um, and then, you know, the other injuries we'll see. Um, but I, you know, it's going to be tough to say that a hurt Mountain City team is better than Worth County. So that's, that's got to be their focus is getting healthy, getting this COVID thing under control. So you have, you know, that big offensive line. That is the only benefit of, you know, the biggest area of depth for Worth County is that offensive line. Um, but you need those guys, the, you, your best guys uh, when the season matters. And so uh, that's going to be their focus is just getting healthy, get ready for districts, get Gladstone adjusted. And then. Yeah. You, you mentioned that, um, that district a little bit, but you got East Action, Stanberry at the top, Mound City right there. Obviously they're, they're struggling a little bit with two straight losses. Um, but, and then it's Worth County and Albany. And that's the thing with the uncertainty of, of uh, getting guys out. Like you would say if you're East Ashton and you get a couple guys that have to get contact tracing out for two weeks and they miss that first game, well, they can still win that first game even without some guys. I don't yeah. think Worth County has that luxury if they stay at the four seed because – Albany's a good enough team, but they showed last week against North Andrew, they can they can play with anybody. So I think yeah, what you need is Albany to not be in that five spot. You either need to hope that you can jump Mountain City or Albany falls below Rockport. Yeah. Um, so it's just like the last district. You know, four and five is you know if it ended today is a really good matchup. Yeah, and those both those are close, um, so you could see that happening, but both still, I would say, are kind of difficult to see happen. Um, I don't know. I've just I haven't been impressed with Rockport um, much this year. Why you're saying it would be an easier matchup <laughs> is exactly why I don't think that they will be the ones likely to come up there and beat and beat somebody to get in front of Albany, especially like this week, they got South Holt. Like I would think they're going to win that game. Um, yeah. I don't know. Albany also has, you know, Albany has to finish on the road at King city and at Pattonsburg. Uh, so you can very easily see the season, uh, the way things are right now, except for one and two, because one of those teams are going to have to lose this week. Um, I think, you know, District 4 could end the way it is. You know, in two weeks, this is what we're looking at. And we'll see where Worth County is there. Like we talked about, the COVID thing makes everything – it's hard to predict, uh, especially in Worth County where um, they've had a lot of issues this year. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. They're, they're trying to kind of get it together here on the fly right before the end of the season. It seems like – Another thing every week for that program. But um, like we said, it'll be interesting to see if Gladstone gets back. If he gets back and plays well and they can get those linemen back, don't forget they were preseason number one team in the state. So they have talent. They just haven't had that talent all year together. And um, it's, it would be kind of scary if, uh, if maybe you, you're without some linemen these next couple weeks but then right before districts, you finally get the whole team back together. And yeah. it could either it could either be all rusty and not, not mesh, or it could just spark right away and all of a sudden you're talking about one of the best teams in the state being being in a four or five matchup in the first round and and yeah. kind of being able to flip that bracket upside down. So and, and we're gonna um, find out a lot about them uh, this week and next. You know, with North Andrew this week, and then the you know one of the as far as you know kind of rivalry games, San and Worth County is as good as you can ask for. It's always fun, and that's how they end the season. And uh, so we'll see. You know, <laughs> uh, Stanbury also. You know, that's a tough way to end your season. Um, but I think uh, if I were a coach, that's kind of how I'd want it. You, I don't think you want to end the season uh, with. 
lesser teams, I think it's a good way to end the season with some tough tests. Then maybe you get a bit of a break in the first round of districts. Yeah. Uh, but then you're ready to go. That's the that's the perk is uh, getting that. If you're a good team, you are in finish the team, year, I think, against good teams because you are going to have essentially a bye week in the first round of the playoffs. And, and to be as sharp as you can, you don't want two consecutive ones of those. So um, I think the rationale there is a little different for North Andrew or D. Satchton <laughs> rather than a Worth County who, like we just said, listing their last two games – they could easily go 0-2 in those games. And then all of a sudden you're looking at going on the road maybe in the first round against an Albany or even at Rockport. And um, that kind of completely flips things. So uh, they, need to, they need to find a way to get a good showing this week against North Andrew and uh, finish the year well against Stanbury. Obviously another, another tough team there. So uh, – It'll be interesting to see as the whole season has been in this yeah. crazy, wild, and wacky season. But on that note, uh, we'll see you next week. And uh, good luck to all the teams this week in, uh, in their games. And uh, we'll, we'll be back next week to recap it all and get you ready for the last week of the regular season. It, it feels crazy that we're already there. But uh, this season has kind of flown by, all things considered. So. Uh, Until next week, we'll see you later.